Hello again. Last time we learned the basics of the Blender interface, how you can set up your, uh, your views and how you can navigate in the 3D space. And today we're going to start to introduce how you can actually modify the scene and uh, you do that by applying transformations, very basic transformations. So let's look at that. This is the stuff that essentially we're going to be animating, very basic transformations. What are they? Well, it's movement, scaling and rotation. And there's multiple ways how you can achieve that. Uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna just flip this to the bottom because I'm used to having it at the bottom. Um, so uh, right now you're seeing these little helper arrows. I don't actually use it. You can, you can use them. Um, if you toggle it on, it's gonna show up and every selected object is gonna have them and you can drag it by the axis to move it. Uh, you can enable rotation and scale as well. So we can scale by an axis, it can rotate by an axis, but I don't actually like that uh, all that much because it, you know, to me it's just visual noise. And you have a very basic um, uh, keys to, to actually uh, do the transformations. And those are G for grab you can move things in the 3d space of course it's a 3d space so it's very hard to make out you know how I'm actually moving things um, so you can still lock on to axes by after you've pushed G and you can move the object you can push uh, X to move in the X axis you can push Y to move in the Y axis and you can push Z to move in the Z axis very cool but that's not a not it you can actually restrict to move in a plane so if I wanted to move anywhere but the Z axis so that's the XY plane uh, I would uh, do shift Z so now I'm only moving in the XY axis if I would want to just uh, do the Z X I would do shift Y and that would be ZX. And, uh, you know, uh, the last one, I think it's uh, it was ZY, so I would do Shift X and it would move in here. Uh, very cool, very cool indeed. Now, in many cases, we would want to restrict the movement not only to the axis of the world, imagine that we would have the cube rotated like that and we would want to move it upwards but uh, not based uh, on the world uh, axis system but uh, the object itself and we can do that by first selecting the transformation type so G for grab and then if I press Z I'm, I'm first given the choice to restrict the movement to the world uh, Z axis but if I push it again as you can see, it will flip to the object uh, grid system. So, uh, I mean, um, orientation. Um, and that is also very useful. Uh, there are a couple of other um, other options. So you can, you know, move it based on how you align the view, etc. But uh, usually these two are the ones that I find uh, very useful. Okay, so we know how to move things. Um, and uh, the other two transformations are essentially the same. So you have scale, um, which um, you do by pushing the S button and then you have rotation which you do by um, uh, pressing the R button. Uh, I'm gonna remove the rotation by Alt R again. So rotation and scale again have the axis constraint uh, working exactly the same so if I 
rotate and then push Z, I can rotate uh, around the Z axis, etc., etc. So those are uh, the transformations that we can do. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this object. You can do that by pushing the X button and you can affirm it like that, but then it does have undo. So if you mess up, you can always do control Z. Um, and um, because we remove things, I'm going to show you how to add things as well. Although we do have a camera, I'm going to remove the two objects. I did that by right clicking the first one, then holding shift and then right clicking the light and again remove this and um, wherever the 3d cursor is uh, we're going to add uh, a new object uh, we're actually going to add a camera again um, i did this by clicking uh, blender actually does decent job of figuring out where it is in the 3d space that you probably wanted to click uh, but if you want to be precise you can push the end button and you get some numeric um, editing of some properties and one of those is the 3D uh, cursor. Um, Blender has got these really nifty widgets um, that allow you to you know interactively change the value you can use the the arrow keys but if you click in the middle you can actually set the value um, with the keyboard like that so I just positioned the view uh, I mean the 3D cursor uh, into uh, the center of the scene. I'm going to push 7 to get the top view and then I can do Shift A to add uh, a camera. You can also use the, the add menu here uh, but uh, one last cool thing that I'm going to show is that you can actually use search to find anything really in the interface. So if I just hit the space bar, I can start typing and I will want to, uh, I, I was going to uh, type camera, but you can already see that uh, there is at camera um, function there. I don't have to know where it is in the menu hierarchy, it just does it very lovely, very lovely. Um, so we have a camera. Uh, we can actually take a look at the scene from that camera by pushing zero. Um, I could also show you that if you're um, you know, happy with a certain view that, that, that you positioned, um, you can um, um, place the active camera to that, to that uh, view by pushing haha now I don't know if it's control zero it's probably control alt zero and yes it is so that's that but I'm gonna again reset the position and rotation of the camera by pushing alt R for rotation and alt G for a location but we're gonna move it slightly upwards Okay, I again pushed G for grab, Z for restricting axes. Now you can see that the camera um, is showing the scene in perspective. Um, if I go to the camera properties here, so in the camera properties we can set uh, multiple uh, properties of the camera uh, and the most important thing in here is the lens type. So we can define how wide we want uh, the view from the camera to be, uh, but one of the one of the uh, modes here is orthographic, which is something that's actually going to be use very useful for the sort of uh, animations that we're going to use. It's similar to the viewport. If you look at the viewport, uh, we're now uh, seeing. Uh, in perspective, you can easily tell that you know this is the far edge. But if I toggle uh, the view with the numerical keyboard uh, key five, it changes the, the view to orthographic, which is sort of useful in in many cases when you're you know dealing with um, 
repeating geometric patterns and you just want to select things. It's actually quite hard for the human vision system to figure out if you have a complex wireframe which one, you know, which part is at the foreground, which one is at the background, but it is useful sometimes. And so the very same thing um, works for the camera. And we're going to be using that because uh, uh, a camera that, that uses the orthographic view uh, will not scale the object um, depending on how far it is away from the camera, which is useful because um, we will just import uh, the textures at the same scale and we don't have to worry about uh, you know something being smaller than intended, etc. So the uh, the z-axis, the, the, the distance from the camera, will actually only um, um, define the z-order, the how, how things are composited on top of each other. So we're going to use that. And um, I'm afraid that, again, uh, we are slowly uh, running out of the time that, that I have for a, a short YouTube video. So next time we're going to be finally talking about textures and um, again if you guys are interested in these uh, tutorials please uh, thumb up the video and uh, uh, let me know in the comments i'll see you next time hopefully bye bye